Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Ahmed, and welcome to today's welcome webinar about digital design workflow. This, this morning, Fed University is our host, and while streaming online, we are also becoming part of their digital design, digital drawing class. Uh, today, we prepared a really practical uh, session for you. We hope you will have fun learning it. Um, today, our meeting uh, will last approximately an hour sparing 10 minutes of it for a Q&A session. Uh, if you have any questions related to the topic, you can keep them for the Q&A session, but also you might write them to the, to the chat during the webinar. I will try to communicate those questions to the artist in between our conversation conversations. Uh, the session will be held in English, but do not hesitate to write your questions and comments, even in Turkish, I will try to remove any language barriers. And for, for the participants staying until the end, uh, good news, Wacom will have some uh, special offers for you. So now if everybody is ready, uh, let's start. At this point, I would like to introduce Honor from Wacom uh, to tell us about the brand Wacom a little bit. Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. For those of you who know Wacom and has been following us, welcome back to our webinars. It's so nice to see you all. And for those of you who don't know Wacom that well, well, we have been in the industry for around 40 years, and we are the pioneers of digital pen devices which means every time you are sitting in front of the computer and you want to do a little bit of more than just typing on your keyboard or scrolling with your mouse, and then it means that you want to check out one of our pen devices, a tablet or a display, because that makes your life much more creative. So thank you, and I will give it back to Ahmed. Thank you, Honor, for the information. So talking about today's speakers, who are we? Uh, starting from myself, I'm Ahmed Aslan, and I'll be guiding you today throughout our session. I'm an interior designer, graduated from Tobi University uh, in Ankara, and currently I continue my uh, studies master program in Italy at Politecnico di Milan. I would like to present to you today's artist, a talented creative, Alessio Tomasetti, who studied architecture at La Sapienza, and additionally has a multidisciplinary background from comics, products, interiors, and digital illustration. He is currently featured at Yed and Rufa in Rome. And today he will be sharing with you his digital painting tips and techniques. Welcome, Alessio. Good morning. Good morning, Ahmed. Welcome, everybody. I'm really excited to be here to show some techniques, uh, some practical techniques that I use both for a uh, teach at university and also for my professional work as an architect and designer. So we'll see together really practical things just to use the uh, digital design workflow to express your ideas, to translate directly your ideas uh, in a while. So let's see together how many fields we can just touch with this technique. And uh, Ahmed, i uh, leave you to the, the floor again. And thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for us, being digital in today's world is in, inescapable. It's something inescapable. Uh, but what does that mean exactly for creators, designers, design students? There are multiple advantages of digital workflows in our project development process. So we will try to understand those steps. Uh, recently, especially after the uh, pandemic, every creative production method uh, started to be performed digitally more often. Needless to say, compared to analog methods, digital workflows are, uh, have brought variety uh, and the richness to our creative productions. It, uh, it is well integrated with the ocean of information and visual data online, 
So digital workflows are time saving and open to exploration. And we have more control on the result uh, with a variety of softwares and uh, special digital tools. Um, talking specifically about digital drawing, it is a highly uh, significant visual tool for designers, but more importantly, it is part of our creative thinking, brainstorming processes. But what are those um, significant aspects uh, of a digital drawing for a design student? Before starting to illustrate, draw any, any idea, anything, you will need to make some decisions in advance. You will have to make the research and the, the, the decisions about your uh, initial design idea. And once you decide that, your color palette will be an important key uh, that affects the mood of the drawing and the textures and the shapes of the objects on the scene and their reaction to the light and then the shadows they draw. Considering all these aspects also, it is really helpful to create several options, several sketches uh, before deciding your final composition. In your case, before going in front of your uh, professors, but also in the future for your clients. After seeing these uh, key points in digital drawing, Let's see in which creative fields you can utilize these tips. These digital sketch uh, key points will be valid for art and design fields. For example, a graphic design idea when you want to create a poster illustration or a logo idea. Um, when you design one of the characters of your animation project, and as you see here, you can simply design all variables on a model's photo like this. Um, in automotive design, in product design, interiors, and you can create an impressive uh, outdoor freehand rendering like this in architectural works as well. So it's a really effective tool. Um, today, I'm well acknowledged that the majority of our students um, up today here are from product design, interiors and architecture departments. So we will be concentrating on these scales at today's demo. And now it is time to move on to our live demonstration. And I leave this stage to Alessio. Alessio, welcome again. Um, how are you? To start, I'm I'm fine. I'm really excited to to start to 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 share some some ideas about uh, the digital design workflow. And uh, we'll start with really simple thing like you know starting from a box, using a box to uh, manage the space, to see the volume in the space on different fields, so we can just have fun together. Yeah, feel free to start and show your workflow in the time. Okay, so I will uh, just stop the presentation for a while and uh, we'll start with a very simple and useful tool. For example, uh, I want to start with this tool that is called Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. It's a totally freeware, so you can just download both on your uh, Windows computer or Mac computer and uh, it works very good with uh, with the Wacom. Uh, today, this is my setup, so you can see uh, as a work usually at my studio with a Cintiq Pro 24, for example, it's very large screen. But you can do the same uh, with tablet without screen and with a screen, so it's not a problem. Uh, the most important thing is that that software is very uh, responsible to responsive to the. Um, to the pressure of your pen. That is the secret inside Wagon. So let's see something together. For example, we want to start making something about uh, um, exterior architecture, exterior design, some, some sketch like this. Uh, in this software, we can choose uh, to uh, manage the perspective 
So I know that for uh, illustration and drawing and to, to do your concept, uh, perspective is something uh, that is really hard to understand. But when you manage it, you can just do everything. You can just uh, illustrate and translate your idea uh, really quick. And with this uh, tool, you can just do that uh, in a very short time. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's start with uh, some color. For example, I used to start with a uh, uh, light color like cyan, for example, and then I will do the cleanup. Uh, but with this tool, the software and other software. But let's start with it. For example, I want to create some uh, space. Uh, and this is my, my cube, my, my box to start. So I can just uh, manage how this box will move in the space. For example, I will have uh, just uh, something similar to, uh, to a cube. And I can move this way, for example. Yeah, I, 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 would like to, I would like you to explain a bit what tool you're using exactly, because uh, at the moment you activated a function of the software and yeah. it looks super time saving. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, it's a two point, uh, two focus point perspective tool. Mm -hmm. And you can just use a central perspective, uh, two focus point, three point, uh, and even more point if you want to do a fisheye perspective. That is very, it's like Escher style uh, illustration. But for example, for architecture and uh, especially for exterior one, uh, it's beautiful to work with two points uh, of uh, this one and this one or focus attention to just put the line and driving the line directly very smooth to the focus point. You see, you can just uh, manage to, to use the pressure really light at the beginning just to do all your construction, for example. And then you can uh, use uh, more pressure to have uh, your stroke uh, more visible. Mm -hmm. So you can just uh, uh, think uh, at the same time where you draw. So it's, it's very useful for a uh, for designer just doing like this because you can just manage better how the object could be in the space. And uh, then you can take your decision directly uh, experimenting with a uh, with the, with the um, design language, that we drafting, uh, making your concept, uh, and this is this is the the, the only way to express uh, in a while your ideas. Because uh, just speaking is okay, but sometimes people have not the same knowledge that you have uh, as uh, an architect, as an interior designer, as a product designer, and so you have to express with the most common language that you know. That is the visual language. We know historically visual language was born before the speech. So we can just regain this uh, really uh, old but cool uh, technique to understand and to express ourselves uh, with a uh, drawing. For example, now I'm creating some kind of building with uh, large windows here and uh, volume that go outside, that push outside. And uh, I'm just uh, taking my decision uh, while drawing, so I can just go on uh, and uh, I'm sure that I'm doing everything, um, controlling it. So starting from a box, it means that you can control because you start with a very simple, the most simple thing you can draw, both an axonometric view or perspective view. And then you can just yeah. put inside the box uh, all the things you have in mind. This is a nice practice also. Uh, I had the same basic design education probably with the audience today, uh, interior designers. Um, and we had some similar approach. We uh, started from 2D and then we, we moved into uh, 3D uh, models. And then we started with uh, box. I mean, uh, what do you now right now? I, I see... Uh, it can be also a beneficial uh, tool for them to, uh, to see because eventually what they create will be, uh, in their case, it will be uh, an, an, an architectural uh, structure uh, from the, the boxes. Uh, so being able to draw them, those ideas, this fast uh, with the uh, program uh, sketchbook, 
it, it sounds just interesting and then maybe less time consuming that, than, than what we were doing uh, back then, uh, five, six years ago. Uh, exactly. And like, you can just uh, uh, turn uh, bot using the perspective and not using it in a while. For example, mm -hmm. you can use the layer manager to do some layer with the construction, some layer with the cleanup, some layer with the, you know, and drawing. For example, I shut off now the perspective and I want to draw, for example, by hand something. It could be, I don't know, some kind of uh, uh, organic things like, like a tree. Mm -hmm. I can just uh, manage to integrate my organic drawing directly in my perspective view, because now I have all the lines to understand for example, that I can just uh, light again the perspective because if I want to do something with, uh, with the trees here, I know that this tree in the background, uh, if I want to, to do something at the same uh, proportion, it will be mm -hmm. something different that is more large here in the front of me. So it's something that you can just manage and uh, take your lines just to only to manage what could be, for example, a larger one on the very uh, um, first plane uh, of perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, something that you can just uh, um, understand in a while. Uh, if you have some theory, if you're studied in your courses, in your classes, the basic theories of perspective, now you can just uh, uh, apply practical in a while. Mm -hmm. Without having some problem with uh, you know making all the construction uh, using the rulers and other things, uh, if you want, you can use here because uh, you have the possibility to, to make straight lines. For example, if I want to work a little bit on a on the sky, but uh, in a in a way uh, you know the design way, just making straight horizontal line, I can do using shift on my on my keyboard. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting just uh, like in photoshop yeah it, it's it's the same yes really it's the same you can do both vertical you know and uh horizontal using only shift is uh is good but let's see something about uh, for example just cleaning up a little bit using the layer, yeah. i'm also seeing uh the uh, color palette that you have next to you yeah and good. it is Topic, uh, really. I mean, that is something that we dream for, but we don't have always, right? Yeah, sure. In I always life. dream to have all the Kovic in my in my table while working, also and and drawing. I I, I love the the um, to 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 draw by hand, but sometimes I have not that color. I have to uh, to pay a lot for sometimes for uh, very a large uh, um, amount of, uh, of Cubic markers. But here, in this software, you have all the Cubic markers there. For example, these are all the grayscale that is beautiful for uh, designers. Uh, you can just choose by, by color uh, and uh, have all the same code you can yes. find in reality. Yes. So for example, if you're working a lot with this uh, uh, warm grayscale, you can just uh, use the same color in your digital way, adding a link with uh, digital. So it's not, uh, you know, uh, an art uh, step, just turning digital, because you can just uh, see the same thing you do in, a, in an analogic way. We can say like this, you can just translate uh, in a, um, directly in a digital way. So it's very interesting. For example, now I want to use a very black color to do some uh, some kind of cleanup, just to have some lines. And uh, I'm using now just a tool that is similar to, to a pencil, because uh, I like this kind of uh, style for, uh, for the draw. But you can change uh, uh, to, to ink uh, and other kind of, uh, uh, for example, of line, more precise, more similar to, uh, to, to, to ink, uh, as I said, and uh, if you can, uh, make all the lines uh, just following, uh, mm -hmm. making the cleanup just following what you did uh, at the beginning, creating your space here. And it could be really fast and uh, um, interesting 
to study the the space the lines and uh, going on like this and even if you want to to change for example um the point of view you can do that moving the focus point uh my advice is uh, do everything with the same focus point then you change only when you want to to create something that is not straight uh, to the to the view and uh, maybe you need to to have another um point of view and other focus point and so you can do that we have we have one question uh, yeah. the name uh, one of our audience asked about the name of this uh, software it is uh, autodesk sketchbook and it is actually uh, open for use for everybody it's free, it's free to download yeah it's 100% uh, uh, free yeah. so, so it's a great tool for designers yeah sure and the advantage uh, as we see here from the beginning of the webinar uh, you have the uh, reference um, perspective uh, references and uh, color palettes first also like you have a lot of rulers for in um, design i mean architects interiors but also product uh, yes, sure. i see also some other uh, rulers so it's a really effective tool for us at least yes, in the sure. sketch phase yes for example we can connect also the software with other software if we like to paint uh, on Photoshop, for example, by Adobe, we can just use the same uh, file, saving it in a PSD file or TIFF file with layer, and we can manage the same layer, okay? For example, now we can do something uh, really different with, uh, we can just collect uh, all the layer that we did uh, in, a, uh, in a group, uh, for example. So you can just uh, use this group here, and uh, making another layer, okay, and put outside because we want to use uh, to do something different. For example, we can do something uh, with three point uh, perspective, okay. If you want to work uh, on a product, uh, maybe three point perspective uh, is something different because in interior design and uh, architecture, we use uh, uh, the central perspective or uh, the, the two point. Uh, accidental mm -hmm. um, perspective but when we work on a product design mm -hmm. for example we can just create a box like this creating a, a perspective from a ball uh, mm -hmm. i'll show you what i mean you see yeah. that's my uh reference cube that helped me to understand the position to understand also the the dimension of my object and uh, this box is useful because uh, you can zoom and, and just work with it. It's not a problem. Uh, it's very cool just using the, the bar to, to zoom, to move uh, your, um, your canvas. It's very cool. And uh, remember that you have the possibility to manage the perspective because you can just do the, uh, all the midlines. And then you can just work inside it. For example, you can do something that is contained in this box and uh, you want to create uh, some point here, for example, and having the possibility to manage the, the, the frame and uh, the, the dimension inside mm -hmm. just to, uh, this technique is, is beautiful because uh, you can just see the object, uh, you can just uh, uh, step on the, the blank paper and see uh, what could be the object. And then when you are sure uh, to have the right dimension, you can go on. For example, with a new layer and uh, without the perspective view, I can just mm -hmm. put this layer more on uh, transparency. So it is better for me. And I can use uh, freehand but with some help or you know some other helping to to draw or i can just draw as a want like uh, you know hand drawing and i can create uh, for example sorry i'm using this layer i want to use the new one okay um i can draw directly my lines 
for my object, it could be not not so so straight because uh, it could be just an handful object. But I'm just managing to to use my my box to understand how the object could be in perspective view. Okay, maybe is a kind of a digital camera. Okay, so all we can do we can follow all my all my lines and do other lines to define this one. After doing that, maybe if you want, you can just uh, manage to create, uh, for example, a new layer to clean up all these things because you want to get something uh, more clean. It's up to you, it's up to your style. Uh, it's something that you can manage directly while creating your illustration. So, for example, working with layer is perfect because I can just uh, use another layer here. I can choose more black color and uh, I can use this one. I want to show this, uh, this tool because it's perfect when you want to do some kind of, uh, want to use a uh, 10 pixel. Okay, some kind of cleanup and you can just manage to, sorry, it's too, too thick. I want to use uh, another thickness. Okay. Smooth so, out your lines. Yeah. Right? Yes, it's like uh, having a distance from your line, so you can just mm -hmm. manage to do a uh, smooth line, clean one. Yeah, that is also a game changer, let's say. Like, especially in the beginning, like when we are um, learning how to draw properly. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's a face that we might benefit, at least not during our uh, trainings, individual training but maybe when we have a final delivery and we want a good result uh, it's a beneficial tool as well and what i see here as you about the perspective um, like you do one exterior uh, view and then you move to product and yeah. there was like i realized there is i mean maybe it's better to hear from you but there are differences between perspective choices. Like yeah, um, sure. on architectural level, uh, we have uh, always human eye level, right? Yes, yeah, sure. While drawing, so great vertical lines every time because you want to show uh, for your user, for your future client, or or to your teacher, to your professor, that yeah. uh, you're uh, entering the space, uh, and so. If you don't use vertical lines, it's something that uh, uh, not as equilibrium for the view. So in interior design and uh, uh, architecture, we use uh, always uh, um, straight vertical lines. But for example, uh, for for a product design, we want to have a different kind of perspective because yeah. we want to show the object in a more extreme point of view from above, from a uh, um from another kind of view and uh, uh um, making some part of the object uh, a little bit the format but to show to emphasize something about the the main feature of the the new object and uh, and so it be really interesting thing mm -hmm. just working uh on a, on a different point uh, uh, of view for example so um I have also a question. Uh, I was thinking, like, also in between scales, you can think of my uh, this question. Uh, because, for example, about the materials, architectural uh, scale has different materials uh, or different material usage than product. And what are the differences uh, in between these scales while you sketch, uh, while you digital paint? Uh, how do you think of materials? Yeah, um, you work with details. For example, if you are doing something with a um, product design, you have to, to add more details. And also with the material, you will have a, a more accurate uh, um, painting, digital painting step. So you mm -hmm. have to want to have a, a right selection just to start uh, 
to create the area, the different mm -hmm. area of the, of the object, and uh, focusing on a uh, uh, surface. Maybe surface are uh, hard or are smooth, and you can just do something with uh, with that. Uh, in architecture, interior design, uh, just creating sketch, you are doing something that is good. For example, for uh, adding the idea of uh, of the surface, not uh, exactly that. Um, kind of material used, but the idea of, of it, if you use the wood, you want to have the idea of the wood, so you can choose the color palette uh, to represent something that is uh, similar to the wood color. Uh, for example, if you want to have more accurate uh, uh, result, you can just uh, manage uh, just a texture overlaying uh, on, on uh, your sketch using Photoshop that is perfect for, for compositing. Uh, exactly. Uh, we have something similar as a question in the chat. And um, the question is, is it possible to bring some images and make them a little bit transparent and edit them or redraw them? So it fits or it has wider uh, usage. Yeah, Maybe sure. you can say something. You, you can do that. You can do that. You it can is. just uh, insert an image here. It will be on the layer. So you can just manage the layer with the image uh, with the transparency. Yeah. And maybe you can use as a reference to work on it. On uh, you can catch the same perspective view just to put other object in that perspective that you have uh, as reference. So it's very powerful. You can just put something, for example, uh, as reference for uh, anatomy, and then you mm -hmm. can just go in, in on that. And uh, yes, you can do everything with this. It's the same. Uh, Workflow that you can use also with uh, with Photoshop, for example. Yeah, for product cases, uh, like as you said, it can be bring over the image can be bring over in this case in your scene maybe a hand keeping the uh, yeah. camera. You can find references and then just bring the image here. I I bet. Sure. And then exactly. trace. Exactly. Or that you can start from a, on product design. You can start from anatomy. And then you can yeah. just create the object over. So it's interesting working like this. Yes, really, really cool. But at this time, I really want to uh, show you that this file it could be um, available also on, on Photoshop. So yeah. I'm doing it right here. I save it. And uh, for example, we can switch now while on Photoshop. OK. And mm -hmm. open the same file. So I will open this file. It's called test one. And you can see the yeah. same canvas. OK, the only thing we lack, but we can just uh, do in a while, is a, uh, a white background just to see everything. So white. And I can put just on the, on the bottom of all the, all the layer here, uh, outside, OK, here. And uh, you can see that we have the same. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the same layer here, so the cleanup, and then the sketch, and then the box. With the layers. Yeah, with all the layers. Yeah. But it's very, right. it's very interesting. So, and also it, it, the same is the uh, for the perspective view that we did before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have all the steps here. For example, if we don't like the construction, we can just uh, not use it. It's not a problem. Okay, mm -hmm. and. Now you can manage it directly in, uh, in Photoshop. It's really interesting working like this because uh, the mm -hmm. background is totally transparent. So you can just uh, have uh, the possibility to put a layer under the, the cleanup and uh, uh, matching the, just starting the, the painting the process without uh, losing the, the black lines, for example, that it's very important. So we can just do something here. For example, uh, I don't like to, mm, and my advice for you, uh, it's the same way I, I work with uh, with my concept. Uh, it's not to lose too, too much time to have uh, uh, to choose too much color. So, for mm -hmm. example, I will show you an, in a new layer that uh, we can just use two colors. For example, uh, we'll paint over here just a little bit painting here. I'll use mm -hmm. this kind of uh, blue cyan and just red color here while I'm putting directly on my canvas, because I can just use Alt to catch the color in a while. 
so you can just interrupt the the flux of painting mm -hmm. okay it's, it's very interesting working like this because you can have the possibility to catch your and even white in a while so you can just have three color without uh, going on the swatches so you can just be really fast working it mm -hmm. and the first thing we do just painting uh we can create another another folder for that okay we call it uh painting as an addition to to the question of uh image uh export export importing image i think yep. photoshop should be a better tool for that like comparing autodesk and photoshop photoshop is more photo editing uh, suitable program right yeah because uh, it's a general software to do everything also about uh, mm, photographic uh, retouching and compositing mm. and also you know uh, making illustration uh, final illustration also some artists do comics also with photoshop yeah uh, it's more generic so you can do, do more things with it uh, but for example uh the tool you have to uh, customize all the tool to work with it so yeah. it's not ready to go when you start with it okay mm -hmm. you need some time uh more hours to set up all the things you you need to create your your concept mm -hmm. um and then you have to uh prepare your your space work to to go on uh with uh uh, this is the, the the main difference with the uh, sketchbook pro with sketchbook pro you start and you are creating something in minutes mm -hmm. uh but you can use both in your workflow you know uh, it's not there is uh, not the uh, perfect software to use there is the perfect workflow so mm -hmm. if you have your workflow maybe you can just use 10 percent of sketchbook pro 20 percent of photoshop yeah. other 30 percent about uh illustrator i don't know if you want very uh, very vectorial lines and clean lines and also some kind of a, a part of um, 3d modeling for example okay yeah. if you want to use rest references and catch the the, the screen and uh, work with it it could be really interesting uh so um, depends on the projects depends on the designers projects. designers actually this is also something to plan in advance yeah well, i can sure. use this for this part of the project and that so just for the yeah. notice, Alessio, before QA, I mean, we can extend a bit more. I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Uh, we have 10 minutes before the QA, but feel free to. Okay, okay. I will show you only just a very uh, fast step because uh, uh, even the harder uh, paint over start with simple things. For example, here we want to isolate this part of the building, so we'll make a new layer. And we make a mask here because you want to mask this part. And having uh, uh, with the selection, we can just put uh, on another uh, on another layer. Mm -hmm. So you can just uh, use another layer, for example, to do uh, just a very flat fill. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you can manage the all the parts. And now you can just decide, for example. The direction of the light this is very important to choose from the beginning. what you did was so smooth actually maybe also you can mention a little bit of, of the pen like you just yeah. selected pretty easily maybe yeah. this image... are very with uh with uh with the needs of the pen so uh you can just start doing a while and if, even if you want to uh switch for example we can switch also on product design mm -hmm. not a problem uh, we can do the same here. So let's change here. Okay, the product. Okay. So even on this one, okay, we can just make the the color painting in a while because we want to select uh, all these things. Okay. And uh, instead of uh, the kind of selection, I will use more smooth selection like curve here. Yeah. And I can just do in a while. Yes. This is yes. impossible to do with mouse. <laughs> no, impossible. You know that everything we, you do with the mouse has two positions on and off. You click is on, you release is off. So yeah. two position with the mouse. Okay, uh, it's a, a very uh, useful tool because you can just do everything. And it, it was invented to 
use the uh, personal computer uh, in a while. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting things, but for uh, just knowing the also the, the history of a um, tablet, um, the, the graphic tablet was born before the, the mouse. Oh yeah, okay. really? That's the 1963, the, the first tablet, not by Wagon, but by uh, just an inventor uh, that created with a uh, uh, Texas Instrument THX computer, very large computer, and was uh, just a tablet to do uh, orthographic projection in, uh, you know, yeah. in architecture. And uh, four years uh, later, in 1967, they created the first uh, concept of the mouse. Yeah, but, that makes more sense. Uh, you can sense. see here, for example, that I did this selection in a while. And I yeah. can start to separate, for example, self-shadowing also mm -hmm. with other selection here. So I can just do my selection really quick and uh, creating some details on the product. So we said, as we said before, for example, the self-shadowing and uh, very important things, uh, which is the, the direction of the light. I will, I will show you after doing mm -hmm. some selection here. Okay. You can create also some kind of details doing this kind of selection. And uh, with a new layer, you feel flat. Yeah. Okay. Just having the perception of uh, how the light is hitting the object from this direction. This is mm -hmm. the angle of the light. So you have, for example, uh, the, the, the drop shadowing that is working in this direction. Okay. It's, it's like this. Mm -hmm. But self shadowing is here. You can just work on a transparency on this one just to manage this part. Okay. And uh, I can just cancel this and doing a really uh, different shadow. Okay. I can just manage to design the shadow in a while here just to have uh, the perception of the direction of the lights. Mm -hmm. Okay. And managing it. It is darker than uh, than the self shadowing, so you can just to, to manage different kind of transparency here. Okay, and the last thing you did while doing uh, color painting uh, is the light. The highlights, the the white color is the last thing. Uh, first, you work uh, on a you know flat color just to fill all the object, mm -hmm. just not having a blank point. So. You start with it, okay? For example, I start also with a mask. I will show you. Mm -hmm. You see that there's a blank mask here. I start with a blank mask just to have the possibility to use transparent color there, mm -hmm. okay? Because I can just have in mind to change, for example, the background color, okay? I want to use another background. I want to use uh, just uh, um, this orangey background, but mm -hmm. my object is popping up. Yeah, and for the presentation matters, you can even take what you did, this uh, camera, and place on a real photo on the table yeah. if you want to give a bit more, you know, enhanced presentation. You, you can arrange the camera one. angle depending on the reference photo. I think it's, there are a lot of yeah, sure. potentials. Well, for example, in that way, my advice is uh, just take the reference picture where you want to do the compositing, try to mm -hmm. understand the focus line, the perspective lines, mm -hmm. and then you can just do your, your box, your starting box uh, with the same uh, direction of the perspective lines. Yeah. Okay? And all the rays are just uh, giving you the possibility to insert uh, properly the object in the perspective view. This is very important while working on design, every field of design, architecture, interior design, um, product design, fashion design too, and also animation yeah. and character if you want to have it. I want to show you very quick because I know that Fine, when, you enjoy, when you enjoy drawing, uh, the, the time is passing away like this. Uh -huh. you know? And uh, for example, I can just have a, a larger um, brush to work uh, on larger uh, highlights, for example. Uh, on the lens, something like this, yeah. on, on some part that are some reflections. Light. Yeah. 
and views every time different layer because you can change your mind and uh, manage to do that. And the last thing is uh, just a new layer, sorry. Okay, just a new layer with a very thick brush and you can just manage to do, I'm using, for example, this time uh, three pixel. Okay, so it's very small. But I can do the details with it. Mm -hmm. So while you're drawing, I want to say also to our viewers, like interior designers, this is a camera here, but you can consider it as a furniture that you place into your oh, uh, sure. designs as a sketch. So you can take, you can think in that way, maybe it will be helpful. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. So you can use furniture. Uh, apply this this technique on uh, every uh, possibility just uh, um, managing your concept another things you can do if you want to do illustration is using another layer for white but uh, uh, thickness about uh, six and uh, for example you can just pop up the object a little bit because you're doing the uh, the outline the cross on mm -hmm. sketch that. Okay, just to have this this kind of uh, more illustration uh, mood look on this. Yeah, that is some final touches, right? Some yeah, polishing it. Yeah, it's like uh, having the possibility to uh, choose a. Uh, um, flat uh, background on there or putting representation or having the possibility to manage uh, uh, your presentation just uh, um, showing the object and giving more importance to the object itself so it, it's very interesting working like this mm -hmm. so, so you have to find your style obviously yeah. sometimes uh, some some tips are really good to uh, to start and go on my advice my final advice is to try mm -hmm. if you uh, if you never try to work with digital drawing uh, and drafting, is uh, like uh, uh, you can understand the possibilities. So you have to try and to manage to to start with very simple things, mm -hmm. but then doing really complex things, and uh, translate your concept uh, step in a very fast way. That is important, and uh, obviously it's important too to have the possibility to share your work. Uh, uh, in a digital way, because you can just uh, send an email, uh, publish your uh, your work on your on your um, website or on your social portfolio. Your, your portfolio, just to manage portfolio and to change, I don't know, the scale on uh, other things. You can just move uh, uh, the object as you want. You can just transform. Uh, for example, you want to, to manage to, to modify a little bit. The, uh, mm -hmm. For example, for compositing, this is perfect. This is a feature with uh, with Photoshop that has you know uh, the best things. So uh, other other stuff that has not, so many possibilities to to stretch and to adapt the the object to your compositing and to your way to to, to work with it. Yeah, it's a transformation tool, right? For yeah, sure. sure. For yes, when you when you select the object and you uh, use Control T or Command D for Mac user. Then mm -hmm. you have any transformation. For example, here I cannot use the advanced one because I'm using all the layer in that group. So I'm making yeah. this transformation with all the layer. So I cannot use warp, but it's not a problem because I'm just managing to, uh, for example, making some adjustment like this or some distortion. Okay, just to have more uh, inclination for the perspective view. You see, mm -hmm. it's changing everything there. And uh, it's really interesting to work. Oh, with final touches. So um, at this point, maybe Alessio, it's a good idea if you completed uh, your demo. It's a good idea to move uh, in Q&A session. Uh, yeah. So for our I can viewers, speak again on our presentation. Uh, sorry, no, you don't have to. Okay. okay. Uh, so for the viewers, if you have any questions, please feel free to write in the chat. Uh, we are happy to answer and clarify all the points that you might have in your minds. Uh, in the meantime, maybe I can start the question, Alessio. 
Yeah. Um, so we haven't talked that much about uh, your background today, but uh, you are also a professor in in Rome. So you have a lot of design students coming to you with uh, drawing in different fields, very different fields. Because uh, yeah. uh, I teach at uh, product design uh, faculty and uh, interior design faculty, jewelry design and uh, um, shoe design. Yeah, uh, shoe design. But, yes, uh, with the same method, you know, uh, we say that it's a general uh, uh, workflow. So you can mm -hmm. uh, use both on fashion design and interior design and architecture design. Uh, yeah. As an architect, I studied a lot uh, perspective rules and, uh, you know, all the way to represent the object. Uh, and I tried to translate very quick when I discover uh, digital design. For example, uh, I bought my first uh, tablet uh, in uh, 1997. So mm -hmm. many years ago, and uh, I have the possibility. I had the possibility at the time to express myself with sketching, for example. That is not so. Uh, I want to show you something while just talking with you. Uh, okay. Off the ground, uh, but in a very quick way. For example, uh, with simple uh, drawing. If I want to create something for uh, you know anatomy or fashion, I have to create uh, my anatomy sketch and. Uh, with wagon, I can do really, really quick because uh, if I know some rules about anatomy, I can just create, uh, for example, mm -hmm. just a human head in a while. Okay. And then I can use it like, you know, a dummy to create, for example, I don't know, a uh, kind of a war visor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can just work both in two ways. This, uh, this is very uh relaxing start uh, uh your concept because uh, uh it's something that you can just translate uh, having in mind uh, how is the the perspective uh, and how it work uh, properly mm -hmm. but without uh, many boundaries and many rules so you can just uh, work like this and uh, uh making some uh, very clean up okay uh, and with the selection as we said before you can just uh, create your shape really fast. Even if it's not perfect, you don't mind because you want to have the possibility to create the, the shape first of the object, and then you can go on with it. So it's uh, something that you can just uh, do in a while. And uh, uh, as a student, uh, my... Yeah. Uh, like I was gonna ask, I was gonna ask about actually from uh, from a student point of view. I mean, your suggestions to do because uh, you see all these different fields and um, students from different fields. Uh, maybe you have an understanding of like uh, their intentions or uh, some suggestions in this regard about when they come to you with the digital sketch or a design idea. What is your suggestion to them in advance uh, to help yeah. for their presentation, for example. The most important thing is your background. Your background is very important. So you must feed it every day. Uh, mm -hmm. It means not only reading uh, all the books, all the magazines about uh, your specific field of design, but it means just to uh, go to an exhibition uh, uh, just uh, um, study about art, even paintings or sculpture, and uh, um, be curious uh, about, uh, you know, movies, uh, the technique they use to do something, for example, okay? And uh, read a lot, uh, both novel and, uh, you know, comics and uh, graphic novel, okay? That is something in between. And yes, with all this reference in your mind, you can just create uh, all kind of uh, uh, design. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's really a, a good thing to do because uh, it's something that you really need to express yourself, having uh, um, the possibility to create something more realistic because you uh, have in mind uh, a lot of information. And this information are not enough. Every day you have to feed it to create something that be um, really impressive and, and new and uh, uh, 
um, you can just explain uh, uh, better uh, to your teacher, to your professor at this time, at this step, but in the future, uh, they will be your customers. So you can just have the uh, practical things. You can just train yourself uh, to have uh, uh, this kind of tool that is very important tool to express and to explain your idea in a while. Yeah, I think the ideas come from out of our focus, right? Out of our zones, um, focus zones, like different fields. Yeah, sure. Some are really unexpected, but yes, yeah, sure, being sure. open but, to that. Uh, is... Even a, a, a music, uh, you know, you're listening to music and you're creating something. Uh, it's good because uh, some kind of mood uh, to inspire you better, for example, uh, than uh, having uh, uh, um, concentration only with, with uh, you know, uh, no sounds and everything. Uh, sometimes you need mm -hmm. to um, have more input from external uh, just to, to work better on, on your um, concept. Mm -hmm. So we, we have uh, another question, I think yep. uh, it's from, from a professor. Uh, so thinking also uh, you being professor in Italy, especially, uh, do universities in Italy use Wacom devices to leverage their teaching style? Uh, do you think it has added value to for, for their education quality? So maybe yeah. you can tell uh, us a bit. Okay, it's a very good question. Thank you. And um, yeah. we make some step up during the years. I started to teach at the Yad University, for example, more than 16 uh, uh, years ago. So I saw just the, the development of uh, digital design drawing. This is my, my field, probably. And uh, when we switch up and create, uh, for example, a Synthi Club with uh, 25 Synthi for, for students, uh, we see improvement in, uh, in the sketching and uh, presentation and also in the project too. Trans translating uh, also in the, the definition, uh, the final definition of the project. So, and we start to use it at the first year, uh, just uh, making something by hand, analogic, okay, and then translating it in a while, doing also some soft step from one to the other. Because, for example, it's possible to put your uh, paper on a, on, a, on a tablet, and then you can just uh, remake the drawing in a digital way, just using your uh, paper drawing as a reference. So, mm -hmm. you can just make it step by step very smoothly to gain the, the knowledge about uh, digital design. And uh, I think I, I, I will never um, change my, my, my way to uh, approach my professional work, for example, and uh, my way of teaching, because uh, I think digital is something that uh, uh, give more than uh, in drawing and not uh, um, creating something that is not a proper, uh, proper like uh, you know, uh, using uh, uh, your pencil or your ink. It's the same thing. You have to use your hand to do that. So it's something that is not automatic. Mm -hmm. uh, something that most is uh, more powerful because you, you can just share in a while. You can use more color. You can just uh, uh, modify your, your design. So it could be a really interesting uh, issue to compare the two kind of drawings and try to translate or the uh, feature that you do by hand, uh, doing by hand, but on digital. Mm -hmm. So uh, for a professor, it is a, a helpful teaching method, you're saying. But also for students, it is a nice um, transition from analog to, to um, digital at earlier steps because we are generally starting from it is not bad but thanks to the pandemic maybe now we are moving totally to sure. digital and then I learned our professors in the universities in Turkey started to uh, perform these lessons in digital I don't know how that works but I think that was the uh, main idea of the question like uh, in that sense it would make a difference in the uh, education yeah, methods. The pandemic, for example, 
uh, it was more useful just to have the possibility to, for example, making the review directly from my tablet and uh, uh, resending the, uh, the student that uh, they rendering, uh, bot rendering, or, uh, you know, uh, digital sketching or other things, okay? Uh, writing that from there, it's, it's very, uh, it's very quick. Uh, I can use it, uh, my, my tablet also on a, a very uh, uncommon uh, software to draw, for example, PowerPoint or Word, okay? So I can draw that from that. Yeah. And it's incredible because, you know, uh, it's a way to approach the, uh, the device. Yeah. Something you can discover time by time and you can approach for all the things you did on, on, on your computer. Not only just the project, but also the way to interact with the uh, interface and uh, open the, the windows and other things. It's very quick. You can just do very precise uh, uh, gesture or movement. Yeah, great. So thank you for the answer and thank you for the questions. I think we are ready to move to the final uh, step of our webinar. Okay, okay. I, I uh, want to say honor, thank you uh, to all the, the, the people that uh, attend this webinar. Uh, I, I really want to say that it's exciting to me because maybe my approach to the uh, uh, to to the to the classes to the to the lesson is a uh, quite bit different, uh, but uh, I really appreciate the the question because uh, explained to me also the interest uh, on just looking at uh, uh, this way to approach the digital design workflow. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. You're welcome. And as we finalize today's meeting, uh, maybe it's time to announce uh, today's uh, offer. I would like to invite Honor again at this point. Uh, for the uh, uh, details of the offer, special offer of Qualcomm. Omar? Hello, hello. Um, thank you, Ahmed, and thank you, Alessio, for that, for that really inspiring and, and super cool presentation and the live demo. And as Ahmed mentioned, uh, we have a special offer for you, courtesy of our partner, Bires Halbilishim. Uh, please visit store.wacomturkia.com and use the code WACOM10, WACOM10. Uh, to get your limited time 10% discount for our newest pen display Wacom One and our award winner Intuos Pro M pen tablets. So that's our offers uh, courtesy of Bireysel Habilishim. Don't forget to write down the website address store.wacomturkia.com with, with your special discount code Wacom10. It's a limited time offer uh, and, and that, that time is limited to the stock. So um, hurry up and we will hope to see you again next time. So. Back to you, Ahmed. Thank you, Honor, for the explanation. Uh, it was for me, and I hope it was for you as well, a wonderful one hour. And I think, I hope also it was useful uh, for our, our audience. And yeah, this will be it from us today. And thank you, Alessio, for this awesome webinar. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I, I just saw a question, but I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get a bit out of uh, schedule. So, um, hope to see you again and uh, in the next uh, other webinars, hopefully. So, take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Take care and uh, try to turn digital because it's a very important step for you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.